Hi everyone, my name is Shauna, in case you don't know, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be doing my July 2024 reading wrap-up. July was an extremely busy month for me, so I'm surprised that I read as many books as I did. However, a lot of the books that I did read were shorter books, and so I didn't read as many like page number-wise, but I did read nine books this month, and my average star rating was 2.56 stars, which is fairly low. It means that I did not enjoy the majority of the books I read. However, I finally got a five-star read this month that wasn't a reread, and this has only been my like fourth five-star read of the year so far that wasn't a reread, so I consider that a major success. If you haven't been following up to date with what I've been doing in July, at the start of the month there was obviously 4th of July, and then there was LeakyCon in Portland, which is where I live, so I didn't have to travel for that one, and then shortly after that I left to go to Florida, and I did Supercon in Miami, and I did Universal Studios and Disney World, and then I came back and literally less than 40 hours later I went to a run fair, and then I had a few day gap, and then I went to WasabiCon. So basically almost every day of July I was busy doing something. So I'm surprised that I got any reading done this month. I was expecting to maybe finish two books this month, but I'd read a lot more than I was planning on it. But I had sort of like an existential crisis recently because I realized like I am not doing good at doing my reading goals for this year. Like I've been just sort of reading for numbers a lot and not reading for like my goals. And so for next month, I'm going to not focus on numbers and instead focus on trying to get my goals more under control. I have to finish my reread of the Harry Potter series, which I'm not going to finish next month, but I'm hoping to knock Chamber of Secrets and Prisoner of Azkaban out of the way in August. And I'm also hoping that I can knock my audiobook reading goal out of the park next month, which means that I would have to listen to, I believe it's like two audiobooks is my goal. May be wrong about that, but I'm thinking it's just two audiobooks, which I think I can easily do those two Harry Potter books plus two audiobooks. And then also I need to stay up to date with a read along that I've been doing with the book club. So I have a lot of plans for next month and I don't know if I'll be able to hit those plans with my reading goals, but I really hope I can. I don't have any cons next month, so I finally am getting a break between cons, which I love cons, but it's nice to have a little break and it means that I will have more reading time. So now let's just get on into the books I read in July. The first book that I read was the third book in a series, and this is the series that I've been reading with a book club, and this is Air of Fire by Sarah J. Mass. The start of the series is that there's an assassin named Selena, and Selena is in these slave mines. She is working as a slave when the prince comes to her and says, if you come and win this competition to become my father's like private assassin, then you will gain your freedom. And so Selena takes him up on his offer from there. But the plot has obviously progressed a lot from there. If in case you don't know about this series, there's magic, there's fae, and there is romance. And so this is one of the most hyped series that I've ever seen in my entire life. And this is the third book, obviously. Well, sort of fourth because I read Assassin's Blade before I read Air of Fire. The order I read it was I read Throne of Glass, Queen of Shadows, Assassins Played, and Air of Fire, which that was just what my book group decided to do, and I believe it's because the author said that that's the order that you're supposed to do it, but I know that some people say that you should read Assassin's Blade first. I don't necessarily agree with that. I don't have too strong of an opinion though. So Air of Fire was an enjoyable read for me, but it wasn't as good as the first two books in the series, which was Crown of Midnight and Throne of Glass. The problem with this book though was that I felt like a lot of this book, the whole purpose was to introduce new characters and to have Selena embrace her role in magic. So it felt like there was a clear like end goal here and those goals made it so this book felt like a lot of filler like it felt like it kept dragging along at several points and I got really frustrated with that because I was like this book could have just been shortened and put at the beginning of the next book or tossed on the end of Crown of Midnight. Because a lot of this book felt like filler the book was really slow which I am not a huge fan of slow books so yeah. Also I am a little worried going forward about the relationship between Selena and Rowan. I just don't want that to be a romantic relationship. I really want Selena to have a male friend that is not a love interest in any form of the word. I would really, really love that, but I don't know if we'll get that. So those were the issues I had with this book and what knocked down a couple stars. However, I did overall enjoy this book. I really like spending more time with these characters, especially Selena, Kale, and Dorian. I'm also hoping that Kale at some point gets a redemption arc because I still really like Kale despite my whole book club practically hating Kale by this point. I really loved the emotional scene that was at the height of the battle in this book. That was one of my favorite scenes in this entire series, and I really want more scenes like that in this series. And there's still a few more books left in this series, so I'm really hoping that I can see more of those really intense emotional scenes at the height of battles. 
I'm also really happy that there was gay rep in this series because I know that I am a big criticizer of the representation in Sarah J Maas's books and while the gay rep could have been a little more prevalent in the story I'm very glad that Sarah J Maas at least included a gay couple in here. I thought that was a really good step in the right direction for Sarah J Maas. So overall I gave this book three stars. I like it but it's not my favorite. It's probably my third favorite in the series right now because Assassin's Blade is like my least favorite in the series so if I were to like rank them it would go Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, Air of Fire, then Assassin's Blade. So I still did enjoy this one. I still am going to continue with this series however it's just not as good as the first two books in the series. So the next book that I read is Mine to Kiss. This is part of the Southern Wedding series and this is by Natasha Madison. So Mine to Kiss follows these two characters, Harlow and Travis, and it's their love story. And it's a very sweet love story because they're both college students and it starts out as just like sweet little flirting, especially during study sessions, and then it really shifts into more steamy and passionate relationship. This book is really short, however, the size of this book worked really well. It made it so that the story wasn't too slow, like it didn't drag on too long. It felt like the perfect length. I also felt like it was really fast paced, which I appreciate, but it wasn't like so fast paced that it felt like we were trying to rush through everything. I love the dynamics between Harlow and Travis. I really loved their relationship. And I feel like a lot of times when I read straight romances, it's typically the woman that is like hesitant in the relationship and a little more like careful. And then it's the man who's more like outgoing and more like wanting things. But I felt like those dynamics were flipped, which I thought was a really fun and interesting thing to read. I also felt like this book was just the perfect escape from reality. I really struggle with the 4th of July and times around there. It's a trauma anniversary for me. I don't want to go more into detail with that, so just know that like 4th of July is hard for me every year. So if I can find books like this one that can just absorb me in it and distract me from the real world for a while in the early parts of July, they really mean a lot to me, which was what happened with this book. There is one issue with this book though, and I will not be continuing with the series because of this book. I was not a huge fan of the ending of the book. The way that the ending occurred it seems like the second book in the series is gonna have cheating it could also be emotional cheating and not just like physical cheating or if there isn't cheating or even if there is cheating Travis's fiance who is not Harlow is going to really be in a terrible position and be screwed over so I don't think I'm gonna enjoy the next book in the series which is why I'm quitting this series right here I honestly think that you could have just like skipped like the last two chapters in this book and just pretended that it was a happy ending and that none of that drama after Travis gets a new fiance ever happens because I'm just oh, I just I'm so scared that if I were to read the next book there would be cheating or emotional cheating in there and I just don't want to read that in a book so that's why I'm not continuing it however everything else about this book was super amazing and perfect so I'm gonna give it four out of five stars this one when I got it was free on the iBook store I'm not sure if it's still free on the iBook store but it might be worth checking out the next book I read is a manga and I read Arcana Volume 1. This is by So Young Lee. So I'm gonna read at the back of this book instead of just summarizing it in my own words and you will understand why I'm doing this in just a few seconds once I start on my commentary of this manga. The young orphan girl Inez has a special gift that allows her to communicate with all creatures. A great unknown destiny awaits her. Inez is the chosen one. She travels to the country's capital where Inez learns of her mission. She must bring back the guardian dragon that will protect her country's fragile peace from the demon race lurking within the shadows. From the creator of Tokyo Pop's model comes an epic fantasy quest filled with wizards, dragons, deception, and adventure beyond your wildest imagination. I have to be honest, I saw this at a used bookstore and it was used so it was a bit cheaper and I saw that cover and I thought that cover looks really pretty. I'm just gonna get it and hopefully this manga is good and I also feel like sometimes it's better to go into mangas not knowing much about it however this one was not the greatest so the biggest issue with this book for me is I was just so confused I couldn't understand anything that was going on and I felt like the plot wasn't really like progressing that much there was so much that needed to be explained early on and I understand some books and manga series not wanting to like reveal everything right away but I'm like I need enough that I can at least understand the story somewhat sorry if you heard my dog barking I don't really know why she's barking there might be like someone walking by the window downstairs at the end of this book honestly the only thing I can tell you about the plot is that there's this girl who's a chosen one I can't tell you much else about this series because I honestly don't know and it's been a bit since I've read this book and I feel like everything that I remember about this book is just slipping from my brain because I didn't like it which happens sometimes when a book is like bad but not bad enough that I'm like remembering every detail because I hate it that much. My other big issue with this manga series is that I do not like the artwork and I feel bad saying that but it is true. If the artwork looked like what it did on the cover I would love it. I would love it a lot. 
So to show you an example of why I don't like the artwork, this is the typical style of artwork that you'll see throughout this manga series. I am not a fan. I'm not a fan of the elongated faces like that. It just is not my cup of tea. I can't look past it. I don't like it. And so unfortunately, I ended up giving Arcana two stars. I think it could have had potential if there was different artwork and if the story was less confusing. However, that wasn't the case. So that's why I'm giving this one two stars out of five. And then I read another book that I got off the iBook store for free. And this helped me finish my goal of reading at least four iBooks, which was one of my goals for 2024. This one is part of the Lakeshore U series. It is called Bite the Ice and it's by LA Cotton. This book follows Ella and Connor Ella decides to attend a Halloween party with her friend. Unfortunately, Ella has like decided that she is not going to date any hockey players because she has had a bad experience with Connor, a hockey player that she had sort of a one night stand with. But she decides to go to this Halloween party anyway. Connor sees Ella and he gets super excited and he sees this as his way to win her back. So it's sort of like a second chance love romance between Connor and Ella. They're both college kiddos, so it's a new adult romance. The only thing I really liked about the story, if I'm being honest, is the pacing. The pacing worked really well. I flew through this story. I enjoyed the pacing a ton, but there's a lot of other things that I didn't like about this book, so I can't give it a super high star rating just because of the pacing. My biggest issue with this book is that the characters only cared about physical intimacy and the whole purpose of this book was just for the two characters to end up having physical intimacy with each other. I need chemistry and I need actual romance in the romance books that I read, especially I just am not a fan of books that are just purely lust and physical intimacy. I need a story with it as well. If you just want smut, then maybe this book would be for you, but it's not for me because of that. I also was really not liking how the side characters were giving the two main characters a hard time for not having physical intimacy recently. It felt really uncomfortable and I felt like the side characters were trying to force the two main characters to get laid. I also really don't like Connor. I felt like he was a huge red flag. He starts getting physical with Ella and he pressures her into doing things despite her saying no and that she doesn't want to do those things with him. Later in the story, Connor also reveals that he basically stalked Ella since that time that he broke her heart so it was like he was giving red flag x vibes so unfortunately this book wasn't for me and i gave it two stars i think it could have had so much potential because i did really like that pacing but i think that the story would have to be entirely different in order for this book to have worked because right now with everything that this book is it just was a hot mess then i read arcana volume 2 by so young lee and this probably won't come as a surprise, but I also gave this one two stars. So I had the same complaints as with the first volume. However, in this volume, there is two characters that are introduced that I absolutely cannot stand. So there's a character, I don't know if I'll say his name right, Kyret. He was shown in volume one, but he isn't truly like introduced and you don't get to see his personality until volume two. He gives massive pedophile vibes especially like in regards to the main character and how he's treating the main character. There's also a king who's introduced in here who gives massive incest vibes and Nope, nope, I am done with this series. I will be unhauling these books soonish. I have so many books that I need to unhaul, so maybe I'll open a Pango book soon. I don't know. After that, I read Death Note Volume 1, and Death Note Volume 1 is called Boredom, and it is by Tsugumi Oba. I may have said the author's name incorrectly, I'm not 100% sure. So I read some of Death Note when I was younger. I honestly don't remember it at all. I know that I went to the library and I picked up like an omnibus. I think that's the word for it. Yeah, like multiple volumes in one. And I know I read through some of it, but I don't remember anything at all. And I got this book a while ago from a used bookstore and I was like, might as well start this one. I want to read a short manga. I absolutely loved this one. So this book follows this boy named Light and Light finds this death note. And with this death note, if you write someone's name in it, then the person that you wrote their name in it will die. So Light sort of gets this godlike ability because of this death note. Now there's also an investigation going on trying to figure out who is killing people. Even though this book is so dark, it is so amazing. And if you can handle dark topics like that, I think you will love it. I personally love this one so much and I cannot wait to continue with this series. One of my favorite things about this book in particular is that there's so many moral questions that are posed by Light having the death note and by the way that Light chooses to use it. I really like deep thought provoking books like this one, which is a huge reason why I liked this one. 
I also feel like this book had a really great pacing, but at the same time, this book gave so much information about the world and the Death Note that is necessary for us to fully understand the world. So for those reasons and more, I'm giving this volume five stars. This is my favorite book that I read this month, and I can't believe I finally have a five-star read for this year because I feel like I haven't had a five-star read in literal months besides rereads. So I'm super excited to have a new five-star read and to have found a new favorite this month. Then I read my least favorite book of the month. And this is an arc that I got off of NetGalley. This is called Abandon Us. It is part of the Odemark series and it is by E.T. Gunnarsson. It's really hard to describe what this book is about because I feel like the author had multiple ideas that they wanted to write about, but it felt like they couldn't settle on one idea to write about. So it starts off in this like dystopian world and like there is massive global warming issues and pollution issues and then it sort of morphs into like a civil war and then it sort of morphs into like zombies. So it's like jumping around a lot and it feels like it can't settle on one topic. It knows that it wants to be a post-apocalyptic book. It just can't settle on what type of post-apocalyptic book it wants to be. And it would be one thing if like this book had all those ideas and like seamlessly connected them, made it really smooth, but it felt a lot like it was jumping from one post-apocalyptic idea to another to another so it was a little weird in that sense so that's why I find it really hard to describe what this book is about. This book was also alarming in the way that it dealt with like the war plot line because this book was like going on and it was just like fine at first and then all of a sudden the book took a turn and was like communism bad, communism bad, Chinese people bad, Chinese people bad and I'm like okay that's racist so let's not just be like oh Chinese people are bad so I was like that's not good at all and it's weird that the author is singling out China and I thought it was so funny how much this author seems to just like despise communism like despising China is not good because it's racist so I'm not gonna laugh at that one but the whole communism thing which was brought up before the whole China thing it just was so funny how the author went like on and on and on about how communism is bad and I'm like I signed up for a post-apocalyptic story and instead you're just like going on these large tangents about how much you hate communism. I also found that this author's writing style didn't work for me. It was very bland and basic and so it ended up making the story feel really boring. I also found the two main characters Robert and William to be extremely boring. They had dull personalities and honestly they were carbon copies of each other so if I wasn't paying super close attention to like who was speaking I could easily have thought that like it was the other character speaking. So for example if Robert went on like a speech say it was like a paragraph speech and I forgot that Robert was speaking I would think oh that's William speaking because they speak the same way have the same personality and they're basically the same character and it's just like two copies of the same character I do think that there was a couple good things in this book like a couple good ideas I thought that the AR cars and the tower were interesting but the rest of the book was just very meh and I did not like it at all so I gave it one star. I am very grateful to NetGalley and the publisher for giving me an opportunity to read this book however this book just didn't work for me at all. Then I read a book that's pretty hyped. I read Fable which is part of the World of the Narrow series and it is by Adrian Young. In Fable there is this 17 year old girl named Fable and Fable is the daughter of an extremely powerful trader in the sea like it's called the Narrows. And four years ago, her father abandoned her on this island for thieves, and she has had to make it her own way. And her father told her, once you can make your own way and make it over to me in where I live, where we live, then you will get what you deserve. And so she spends these four years working on saving as much money as she can, and this book starts off when she decides to hop on a boat and start making her way to her dad. I thought I would love this one. I read The Last Legacy by Adrienne Young and I thought that book was like fairly decent and I especially really liked the writing style in that book. So I thought if I really like the writing style but I'm not a huge fan of the content, I'll just pick up another book by Adrienne Young and hopefully it'll work out for me. It did not work out for me, it actually was way worse than The Last Legacy. I found this book to be extremely, extremely boring. I was nearly falling asleep every time I would read some of Fable. I thought that the pacing was super slow and the story drags along a lot. I also felt like the plot was nothing special. The only time that the plot actually interested me was the last 2% of the book, which is really disappointing. The characters also felt really dull. West was the only character I even semi-liked, but all of the characters felt extremely dull. They had really boring personalities and I didn't care about any of them. And also if you're like looking at the crew of the Marigold, Besides Wes, I couldn't tell any of the boys apart because their personalities felt so similar and so dull that I just could not keep them apart. Like I was like, oh, it's a guy 
on the boat every time that like one of their names would mention but I couldn't pinpoint anything specific about them because they were so boring that I couldn't remember details about them and I couldn't differentiate them from each other in my brain. I also felt like this book wasn't very memorable so it's good that I'm filming this video now because I feel like there's a high likelihood I will forget everything about this book in the very near future. So I ended up giving Fable one star. I feel so bad because this book is so hyped and so loved by so many people but Fable is just not a book that works for me. And then I spontaneously decided one night at like 3 a.m. to pick up a picture book off my shelf that I hadn't read yet and to give it a read, so I picked up Dr. Ninth. This it was written by Adam Hargreaves, but the creator of this is Roger Hargreaves. This is a very distinctive style that I think a lot of people will recognize because it's the Mr. Men and Little Miss style. In this one, it just has a little fun story with the Ninth Doctor and Rose and Captain Jack. I'm trying to find you a picture. There we go. Look at the TARDIS. It's a very cute, lighthearted story. It isn't very deep, so I feel like it's really great for kids and it's really great for people who are absolutely in love with the Ninth Doctor and want to spend more time with him. Honestly, it wasn't anything that special, but it was pretty cute and I'm glad to have it in my Doctor Who collection. So I gave this one three stars. So those were all the books that I read in the month of July. I hope that all of you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to go to thumbs up and subscribe to me if you haven't already. I hope all of you had a great reading month in July. Feel free to leave down in the comment section below what your favorite book that you read in the month of July was. I'm very excited to start reading some new books in August and hopefully I have a lot more books I enjoy. I feel like the enjoyment level that I've had for books this year has not been the greatest, so I'm really hoping that in July I can find some more five stars. I try and upload a video at least once a week, so I will see you next week for my next video, and until next time, goodbye!